shoot out. Shoot out. Shoot out, shoot out, shoot out, shoot out. It's time for shootout. And today we're going to be having a look at two pens. Visconti Opera... I almost said crystal. I could just stop myself in time. Opera Elements versus the Pelican Souverain M800. Uh, I was asked to do this review, and I'll gladly oblige. Uh, these two pens have nothing in common, except that they are both awesome. I mean, they look very differently. One is a piston filler, the other is cartridge converter filled. Um, but I see the point in comparing the two because they're both nice. I think the yeah, the price range should be about the same, so there is definitely reason to, to compare the two. Separate reviews of the pens are on my channel, so if you want more information, uh, check them out. Visconti Upper Elements, you know that I love this pen if you've seen some of my videos. For a serious pen I ever bought, a 14 karat gold nib, lovely pen, beautiful finish, I mean just look at this. Um, so giving you just a short, brief rundown, lovely pen, note the square profile with edges rounded off beautiful clip or sorry cap system that makes sure this clicks in place and aligns the flat sides of that square um, just a wonderful pen overall nib is nice springy responsive smooth pleasant 14k gold nib beautiful two-tone it's a large nib I absolutely love it section yes it's metal Yes, it's smooth. I don't find it slippery at all. Perfect shape, perfect size. Lovely to use. Not a huge pen, um, but definitely big enough for me to use unposted. I love it. The M800 is a uh, yeah a different pen. As I said, it's it's a piston filled pen, so uh, it works a bit differently. Uh, another lovely one. A nice eye for detail here on top of the cap. We have the Pelican. Uh, we have the Pelican clip. You see the eyes the pelican on top there and then the, the, the bill of the pelican um, so that's quite cool cap screws off we have the nib the nib is 18 karat gold this is a triple broad nib which is is not a joke that's a, a seriously broad nib just look at that tipping that's a lot of nib uh, another beautiful two-tone nib has the pelican on there as i said piston filled so uh, this holds a lot of ink Right now, there's ink in there, so I will do a disassembly bit in this video. I know people like that, but I'll replace it with my M1000 because there's ink in here. Can't disassemble it. Um, finish, wonderful. Another pen with a beautiful finish. I mean, just look at that. Fantastic brown gray. Uh, I love it. Uh, this too is not a huge pen, um, but definitely big enough to use unposted. Uh, and posted, it's it's perfect, beautiful. It's a bit big for me. The cap could post a little bit deeper, to be honest, and I think it would be truly perfect. But for me, it's just lovely, great pen. Um, that's not a whole lot more to say. It's just a wonderful pen. I think the most illustrative thing is to show you how they write. That's what I'm going to do next. I hope this is going to be useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, disassembly of the Visconti Opera Elements and the Pelican M800. Now the point is this already has ink in there, um, so I can't disassemble that, but I can show you how to disassemble an M1000. The Opera Elements also has ink in there because I just shot another encyclopedia entry, uh, encyclopedia, sorry, a shootout. Um, it's very simple, you can watch that one. It is the shootout between the Visconti Opera Elements and the Opera Crystal. Um, so. Uh, check that out. I'll, I'll try to put a description in, or a link in the in the description. If you don't see it, let me know and I'll add it. Um, so I, I won't disassemble that. It's very simple anyway. Just nib and feet are friction fit. So this is a bit more difficult. It's easy to get the nib and feet out. You put them in the crook of your finger, put your thumb on there, and you gently unscrew the pen. That way you won't misalign nib and feed. Uh, you can clean this out. I would not recommend trying to remove the nib from this because it's in there quite tightly. I wouldn't I wouldn't fiddle around with that too much. Um, then we have the piston housing unit. Unfortunately, you can disassemble it, but you will need a tool. A Twisby tool. A Twisby tool fits perfectly well. You slide it in there, only fits in one way. Then I like to screw this shut a little bit to give you a bit of purchase there. And then you screw to the right. 
a bit of purchase, he said, and then the wrench fell out. You screw to the right, not to the left. And as you can see, this gap increases. Pull out the entire piston. If you unscrew this bit, you'll see that the piston will move out. You see it's nice and greasy. Put some silicone grease there, as well as on the seal. Then put it back in. Um, okay, I have to show you, otherwise you may get in trouble later. Um, the blind cap comes off and then there is a piston guiding unit. Piston guiding unit goes into the back end of the whole, well, piston housing unit, I suppose. Um, you put this back in there, but the first thing you do is you screw that blind cap on there for a bit. Now, what exactly is a bit will vary from pen to pen and the way you like to set things up. I always just screw it up to about that point, and then I see. I just take the piston, I put it in there, I put it on my hand here, as you can see, so you get some nice grip, and then I just screw that back in place. And this is not bad at all. Why is this not bad? For two reasons. First of all, the piston is almost all the way back, meaning you get a large ink capacity, because if it still sticks out up to this point, clearly it will not draw up as much ink. And secondly, there is no gap between the blind cap and this bit of the piston housing unit. If there is such a gap, then it will look ugly, because there will be a gap there. You see? Okay, so... I screw that out carefully, don't drop the piston, screw this back in place, put that back in, and then we screw to, oh, to the left, right? This is the left, yeah. Don't over tighten anything, this is resin, so it will actually crack, just make sure it's in there tightly, and then you should be set to go. If you added some silicon grease, operation should be nice and smooth, carefully don't put silicon grease in your fingers, put this back in there, whoops! Screw it back in. Again, don't over tighten. I mean, as soon as it's in there, it's in place, that's fine. And that's the disassembly of an M1000, and it generalizes exactly to an M800. Exactly the same thing. Okay, so let's ink up these pens. Well, actually, this is already inked up, and so is this, so we can just do the writing sample. How about that? Okay, boys and girls, two titans. Here we have the Visconti Opera Elements. Visconti. Opera elements in the city. It's the movie guy once again. And here you have the pelican. I'm not going to write down Souverain if you don't mind. And this is a triple bra nib. That nib is no joke. You want to paint your house? You use that nib. This is a medium nib, which is not exactly skinny either. Um, Big brown fox jumps over the daisy dog. You have to do this in some type of opera style, and that was nothing like opera style. Die schneller brauner Fuchs springt. Über, über dem. Ah, what is lazy? Foul, foul, um, oh wait, uh, lazy Hund. It's German, right? It's German pan, gotta speak German. Always speak to your pans in the language from the country they're made in. That works best. Now, the true trick of this pen is not the writing, it's not even its excessive wetness. Look at that, look at that beautiful wet patch of ink. It's almost erotic, isn't it? Yeah. No, the true trick of this pen is its flex. Boom! Shakalaka! Now that's pretty. If you were to buy this pen now, I think it's discontinued. If you were to buy it now, you'd probably get a steel nib or a palladium nib. They don't do this. This is the 14K Visconti nib on this specific pen that does that, so be very careful when you buy that expecting this. Preferably get a gold nib, but I think Visconti is trying to stop their gold nibs, stop doing them. Well, this one, it's not exactly dry either, but you see it's not as excessively dry as that Visconti, even though this is a triple broad nib. As to flex, 18K, you can get some flex out there. 
So, which pen to choose? Well, if you need ink capacity, you definitely need a piston filler. If you just like pretty and want some flex, get this in a 14K nib. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.